Imagine you just got your dream shot. This osprey pulls the fish out of the water at just the right time of day and the sun glints off of it. Or maybe you're a landscape photographer and you get that Ansel Adams calendar cover. Maybe it's your baby's first steps or you're a wedding photographer and you just photographed the most beautiful couple at the happiest moment of their lives. Now what? These images, these videos mean so much to you. They are irreplaceable. But to the universe, they are just a string of ones and zeros at the whim of magnetics or electricity. Just one of those ones can flip to a zero and the entire thing is lost. This has happened to me and it's happened to a lot of you. And if it hasn't happened yet, it will. I'm going to show you how Chelsea and I manage 125 terabytes of the most important files in the world to us. How we manage to share these with editors all around the world, sending them to sponsors, even confidential stuff like unreleased camera products, and we do it with no monthly fees. This is a NAS, a network attached storage, which is literally storage that attaches to your network as opposed to a drive that might connect to your computer by a USB cable. Because it's on the network, it's accessible from multiple different computers or anywhere. For example, I can access files from my phone. I can share files either directly from it or through cloud services like Google Drive so that editors can access the files anywhere. I originally bought this because I was cheap. To upgrade to an eight terabyte drive in a MacBook Pro cost $2,200. Storage itself, hard drives, are not nearly that expensive. So I was able to buy this NAS and multiple hard drives with redundancy in case one failed for far cheaper than just upgrading my internal storage on my MacBook Pro. That was six years ago <laughs> that I bought this very unit and I've been using it constantly ever since. It has been the cornerstone of our entire business. Publishing, photography, video, YouTube, everything goes on this particular device. But as you can imagine, the more you create, the more files you have, and three drives wasn't enough. This model has eight bays, each of them hot swappable, each with drives that I choose. I don't have to buy the drives from Synology. And if one of them fails, well, I'll show you what happened when one of them actually did fail. Before the drive even failed, the Synology NAS notified me that the drives looked like they could fail, so I ordered replacement parts. I then located them, causing it to blink orange and beep, and deactivated the drive so I could safely remove them and replace them. This orange light indicates the failed drive. I can replace it with no tools, pull it right out. Notice the old drive is 10 terabytes while the new drive is 16 terabytes. And then I just slide the drive right in there. Then I just select action repair and let the NAS do its thing. If you're a successful creator, whether professional or amateur, eventually you'll fill up any amount of storage. And this has been incredibly expandable. I don't need to keep buying more of these. This one, I just bought an expansion unit and added five more drives. And then when I filled that up, Yep, I bought another expansion unit. And as drive technology changed, I didn't need to pull out my old drives. Some of the drives are original 10 terabyte drives. Some of them are newer 20 terabyte drives and everything in between. Before I had this NAS, I had drives fail and I lost data. I had drives that didn't fully fail, but individual files became corrupted on them. And both of those were heartbreaking to me. This NAS supports Synology Hybrid RAID. That is a special type of RAID that will aggressively seek out and fix corruption. Your standard backups do not have that. Your standard RAID does not even have that. To prevent data corruption, just select BTRFS when you set up your storage. Then make sure you schedule data scrubbing, which periodically removes any corruption that it finds. I also have this set up for two drive fault tolerance. That means if one drive fails and I'm waiting for the replacement to come in the mail and another drive fails, I'm still okay. Most RAIDs, they can only tolerate a single drive failing. To get that sort of redundancy, I would need to put my files on the cloud where somebody else would be managing them and I'd be trusting Google or Apple. But here's the thing, Google charges $100 a year for just two terabytes of storage. Apple's iCloud, it works pretty well, but their highest tier of storage is 12 terabytes and that's $720 a year 
By the way, I have 125 terabytes of data, so I'd be paying upwards of like five to $10,000 a year for cloud storage for the rest of my life. With this, I purchase it once. I purchased the drives once, and there are no subscription fees. And yeah, I know all about the so-called unlimited cloud storage plans because I've been kicked out of a few. Once you actually start to upload data, it's not going to be profitable for them. And they're going to boot you, or they're going to start charging you thousands of dollars a month, or they will just throttle back your upload and download speeds to the point where I found it impossible to get any portion of my data uploaded. It's Tanstaffel. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Let's talk about backups. Some of you think you have it licked by just plugging in a USB drive once in a while, but what happens when that USB drive fails? Over time, BitRot will flip those little ones and zeros on your backup drive so that when you actually do try to restore it, those files are going to be corrupted. Here's what we do with our NAS. We use the Synology Drive client on all of our PCs, all of our Macs, and they back up not every night, but continuously. I don't like nightly backups. Here's the thing. Do you want to work a full day and finish a project and then have your drive fail and then have to start that whole day over? And it's not just computers. You can back up your phones and your kids' phones and your spouse's phones and keep everybody safe without having to pay for iCloud or Google storage. Look, you got this far in the video. It means that when your computer's internal drive fails and then you find out that the files on your old USB drive are corrupted, you're going to have to say to yourself, Tony told me this would happen. Don't make that mistake. Go and get a NAS. I have some suggestions coming up. Look, Synology has big NASs for enterprises. They have things like this for creators like me, but they also have small things for consumers, people just getting started. One of my favorite first solutions is the DS223, which supports just two drives. But you could put a couple of 10 terabyte drives in there, have full redundancy, high performance network connections, and be in under $600. And like I said, mine is six years old. This isn't something you regularly need to replace. But if you're constantly creating photos and videos like Chelsea and I, you will inevitably fill up one of the smaller bays. So you might want to think about something with a little more expandability, like the Synology DS1522 Plus. That has five storage bays that you can fill with five drives, not right away. You could just put one or two drives in there at first and leave the rest for some expansion. But then also add additional five bay expansion units like this for a total of 15 drives. And for some of you, that's going to be less expensive. Here's This gets a little technical, but with RAID systems like this, you basically lose either one or two drives to the data protection. So if you just have two drives in it, that means you're losing half of the capacity to protect the data. But if you have five drives, that means you're losing only 20% of the total capacity. And that's why things actually get more efficient as you add more and more drives in a RAID system. And when you do add an additional drive, you don't lose any portion of that. You basically get that entire new drive's capacity added to your usable storage. With current hard drive capacities, that DS1522 Plus can go up to 216 terabytes of data. If you really, really don't want to lose your files like me, one NAS isn't enough. I actually have two NASs in different locations. That way, if flooding or fires or theft hit me, I can just fall back to that other location. Synology has a couple of technologies that allow you to do that. There's Hyper Backup, which squeezes your files down, uses data deduplication to make sure it's not storing the same file multiple times, and transfers that compressed file over to some remote NAS somewhere else. Me personally, I use snapshot replication because most of my files are video and photos that are already compressed. But also, snapshot replication gives me instant access on the backup device. So if my primary NAS fails, I don't miss a beat. I can keep working on my existing projects simply by connecting to the backup NAS, which has a constantly available set of my current files waiting for me. A big corporation would call this business continuity, but creators like myself need it too, and the Synology NASs give it to me. Look, we creators fall into one of two categories. Those who have lost data and those who will lose data. I'm in that first category. 
I've lost data, but I'm not going to let it happen again. That's why I bought my first Synology NAS six years ago. That's why I continue to use it. And that's why when Synology reached out and said, hey, could we sponsor a video just to have you tell your story? I said, yes, absolutely. This is something that I believe every creator absolutely needs. So check out the links in the description to get your own Synology NAS. And if you have any questions about storage, I'll be in the comments answering them to the best of my ability. Thanks for sponsoring this Synology. Bye.